From Belfast town I came That city I will never see again And though I love my country I am not a bitter man I've seen cruelty and injustice at first hand So then one fateful morning I shook bold freedom's hand For right or wrong I'd try to free my land And you dare to call me a terrorist While you look down your gun When I think of all the deeds that you had done Thundered many nations, divided many lands. You had terrorized their peoples. You ruled with an iron hand, and you brought this reign of terror to my land. And one cold October's morning. In a lion's den I found myself Imprisoned once again I was committed To the H-blocks For fourteen years or more On the blanket The conditions They were full Then a hunger strike we did commence For the dignity of man But it seemed to me that no one gave a damn But now I am a saddened man I've watched my comrades die If only people And you dare to call me a terrorist While you look down your gun When I think of all the deeds that you had done You had plundered many nations Divided many lands You had terrorized their peoples You rolled a whip and I ran hard And you brought this reign of terror to my land May God shine on you, Bobby Sands For the courage you have shown May your glory and your fame be widely known And Francis Hughes and Ray McCree Who died unselfishly And Patsy O'Hara and the next in line is me And those who lie behind me I pray to God my life is not in vain. Our sad and bitter was the year of 1981. For everything I've lost and in all pain won. I mean, this time 32 years ago, it was actually this weekend. Um, 32 years ago, I was sitting with the hunger strikers up in the prison hospital, all sorts of potential negotiations going on, which weren't going anywhere. But I actually was, uh, it was a very, very moving experience for me. 
because uh, it was the first time that I actually physically met Joe McDonald. I had been on the wing with Big Doc and, and had known Doc. And, uh, but it's the first time I met Joe. Apart from early that year when we were in Hitch Block 6, I was in one wing and he was in a wing across the way. It was during a, a period where we were trying to get uh, a bit of movement going and, 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 and sort of uh, post the first hunger strike. And uh, when Bobby Sands had shouted across to the other wing that I was taking over as OC, Joe McDonald jumped up on the pipes and looked out the window and he was shouting over, get him up on the pipes. And I get up and wave, where are you? I says, such and such a cell. He took one look and he says, holy shit, we're Donald Duck Nyland. That's what's taking over here. So uh, he was humorous. He was, uh, he was a hard man. Joe was hard. Uh, totally dedicated. And just when we were talking about youth, when you think about it back at the time, Joe McDonald was the eldest. I think he met him in 30 years of age when he died. He met him in 29 when he went on hunger strike. I'm just not 100, but he was 30. And... Uh, by all stretch of the imagination, that's a young man with a full life ahead of him. And he had a family and uh, his children, uh, like some of the other lads as well. So th the burden of responsibility falling on the shoulders of family lads in there, as well as, as, well as others, was absolutely uh, massive. And, and it, it's actually hard, you know, to get to the depth of the feeling and the understanding and the emotive charge of somebody like that there who's on hunger strike with family members coming up. And I always like to try and draw attention to the fact that while we were the people at the cold face of the struggle in the H-blocks and while the lads were on hunger strike, the families, uh, the, the, the emotive charge, the heartache, um, the, the pressure that was on them, was absolutely phenomenal and we could never understand fully you know how that felt to go up on a visit to watch your son your brother your husband down on hunger strike and uh, to me uh, we owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to the families for their continuous support throughout that period which was an absolutely horrendous year I mean I would always put it down as one of the worst years of my life and uh, I think a lot of the other people would, would feel that as well. And uh, I don't want to be negative about it because the positive aspect of this were 10 very courageous people who died in hunger strike and other lads who were on the hunger strike as well, uh, you know, fought the way forward to break the criminalization policy and uh, to ensure that this great struggle of ours could be propelled forward and driven at a pace. And I mean, look, look at, the, at, at the lengths we've gone to, look where we are today. You know, long way to go yet. Still a struggle, as Owen is pointing out there. This is 2013. We're still in the midst of struggle. But I have to say that sitting with Joe McDonnell and the rest of the hunger strikers in the hospital wing that weekend, th there was a tremendous air of uh, anticipation that something might happen. There was a potential for something to happen. And the Brits had the opportunity, as they did on many occasions, to get out of the situation without having egg in their faces, without having to roll over and die, without having to surrender. They could have got out of it in an honourable way and they chose not to. They chose to drive us into the ground and that's where they made their mistake. Because the mistake they made was not, under, not understanding the psyche of Irish struggle and of Irish people particularly of people at the cold face of struggle and hunger strike, there was absolutely no chance in a million years of breaking those hunger strikers, none whatsoever. The Brits thought they could do it, they were wrong, they were proved to be wrong. Maggie Thatcher's dead and gone, her criminalization policy was dead before the hunger strikes ended. In fact, it probably died the day that Bobby Sands was elected uh, as a British uh, MP for Fermanagh South Tyrone. So, I would just reflect on that period. It was hard, it was tough, uh, and I know that what I took from each and every one of the hunger strikers and talking to them and learning from the experience and learning from their example, which was a selfless example, that they put their lives on the line for this struggle and under no circumstances. I mean, Joe McDonald's parting words to me when I was leaving the prison hospital was, don't you worry, Joe McDonald's strong. I'm not let you down. And I mean, that was it. And this, this was, 
Th this was actually a repetition of words that Bobby Sands said to me two days before Bobby Sands went on hunger strike because he said to me about a replacement strategy and we'll get into a bit of a discussion about it. I didn't want to trouble him about it. We were in the canteen at Mass on the Sunday morning and he said to me, have you got the replacement strategy? And I said, yeah, but don't you worry about that. He was more concerned about me having my head around what was happening than he was about himself going on hunger strike within days. So when I said to him, no, I have it, it's all sorted out. And he says, well, who's replacing me? And this is the measure of the people we're dealing with. And I says, what do you mean, who's replacing you? He says, look, see in two months' time, I'm not going to be here, but you are. He says, and you're going to have to carry the con. See if there's any negotiations, you're going to have to know what you're doing. This has to be rock, rock solid, and you have to be totally and absolutely solid on the ground. So who's replacing me? I says, well, if you must know, it's Joe McDonald. And he says, well, I'll tell you what, that's a good choice. Joe McDonald will never let you down. And it's the same sort of thing. And, and it always come back to me, you know, a couple of months later, that Joe's saying the same thing to me. Don't you worry, i am not let you down. None of them let us down. Every single one of them were solid as rocks. And they drove, they drove it right through the Brits. The Brits just couldn't hack it. And that was, I mean, that was the size of it. And from there, it certainly was a foundation stone for the develop for the building and the development of Republican politics right through to this day. There's no question in my mind that uh, that was a major, major driving force that has brought us down a road with all the difficulties and with all the hurdles we have to we have to claim. And just when I was saying that we were up in the H blocks, they're never out of the news. They were never out of the news 32 years ago, 40 years ago. When the internees were in, when we were in the sentence people in the cages, when the hitch blocks were built, when the hunger strikes were going, when the escape happened, and they're still in the news. And the reason they're still in the news, there are people who want to roll the clock back today and believe and, and wipe it and, and forget about it, you know, don't be talking about it. Let's not have stories about Joe McDonald or Bobby Sands or Karen Doherty and all the rest. Let's, uh, let's not talk about that. You can't visit the place and talk about these people. You can talk about the aircraft hangar and the World War II stuff that's there. You can talk about everything else. Don't talk about the hunger strikers. Why? Because they're still afraid of it. They were afraid of it then, and they're still afraid of it now. And they cannot come to terms with the fact that we as Republicans took on the mate of the British Empire who decided that the best way to defeat the IRA struggle and the nationalist struggle in this country was to criminalize the prisoners. And we took them on on a battlefield that they set and we won. And the reason we won is because we had 10 people who went to the wall and went beyond it for the people who are standing here today. And we owe them an absolute massive debt for their courage and determination to bring us through that there because they smashed it right through. Which means that Owen's up here talking about young people today that, you know, we take confidence, we take confidence and take uh, example from the selfless example that they put down in 1981. And I've always said to people, I mean, we all get depressed and we all get cheesed off, but see at the depths of despair, all you got to do is step back a wee second and say, well, hold on, why am I here able to talk about this? Why are we here able to gather around uh, monuments and gather around commemorations? Why are we able to enjoy life? And part and parcel of that there, and one of the key elements is because 10 people died to ensure that this struggle would not fail, in fact that this struggle would be propelled forward. And I have fond memories, very, very emotive memories at times when we're up on them hitch blocks and I know some of Joe's and Karen's family are here today and uh, we were all up there two years ago and it was a very highly emotively charged uh, situation to be in that hospital wing. And it's the first time that I listen to some of the family members relating their experiences from 30 years previous and, and to say, well, yeah, I was here and this is where I was standing and this is the room I was in and yeah, our Joe was here and our Kim was there and, and Bobby Sands was here and we knew the cells that were in and we went through it. And uh, for me, uh, I actually found it difficult, although I didn't have to speak. I stood and listened as we went round the room. Martin Hurston's uh, brother was there as well. There were other family members. And each of them relayed their experience of being there 30 years previous at the deathbed of their loved one. And for me, it was just, it was a massive, massive 
occasion. And this is what some of these opposition are trying to put down. They have absolutely no chance whatsoever. Because when you think of the, the, the determination, the pure grit, dedication, and determination that there, our lads had uh, during that hunger strike period, there's absolutely no way can we feel in this struggle. We're going forward. And if we go down on our knees, you can get back up again and say, well, there's the example. They were pinned to the wall and they went through it and they've shown us the way forward. So folks, I want you to think about it. Always reflect on it. When you get a chance, pop into the graveyard. I do it occasionally and just go over and say hello to the lads and uh, just say, remember you, never forget you. And uh, fair play to the... Uh, the, the, the struggle that, uh, that that you waged on our behalf, and that uh, we know you're still with us. We know that you're guiding us, and your example should help us along the worst roads along the way to get through this here. With the example of people they got, we won't fail. We will get there, folks. So, Karukid Milimayogov, for your turnout here today. Uh, thanks very much indeed. And uh, let's just remember the lads always fondly and uh, heroes of our struggle.